I'm Chris Coleman, Vice President of Young Professionals and Yachting, here with Patrick Knowles of Patrick Knowles Designs. Thank you, Patrick, for giving us the opportunity to learn some of the insights of uh, the yachting design industry. Thank you, Chris. Welcome to my design studio. If you could do anything to improve the yachting industry today, what would you do? What would you recommend? Actually, that's a question that's dear to me, and I'll tell you why, is in today's world, there's so much technology, and more and more, you're learning it, I'm learning it every time. Understatement of the year. Every time we look at our phone and, and turn on the, the TV or whatever, um, we learn of something new in technology that is now the replacement of what was done before right. by hand, by person. And you know, that trickles down to so many different levels. And one of the things that I would love to see, not just domestically here in the US, but globally, to see a comprehensive apprenticeship program where you have children uh, going through school coming out and you know they're young adults and they're entering the workforce and sometimes they have no direction or sometimes the direction is into other industries that do not require that that tactile uh, uh, ability uh, to be able to make things or do things with their hands so you know I've been on projects before as we were talking a little bit earlier that you know upon delivery and you walk through these 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 deliveries and these vessels and you just can't help but to really look with admiration at the quality and the craftsmanship and seeing these men and women who produce it just a glow you know they are they are experiencing who knows how long who knows how many hours you know a year two years of their hard work their craftsmanship bringing it together and i got excited about that and i got excited about all things handmade whether that is millwork whether it's masonry work um, painting uh, the list goes on. And so I, I think it would be amazing to have that sort of uh, an implementation in our industry systemically. Um, there's a lot of talent out there and an apprenticeship program could most certainly funnel it. What are some of the few, what are the few principles that you could say transcend your product or your project line from, mm -hmm. from your inception to now and, and continues to be um, a focal point of, of your work. Mm. You know, learning this craft uh, in the absence of technology um, has given me an advantage that uh, there's an understanding that really only comes from hands-on. I'll give you an example. Um, in my CAD department, uh, even though I myself do not operate CAD, uh, there's not enough time in my schedule to do that. Right, of course. But um, to be able to direct a CAD department, it's best for the person that's doing that that knows how to draft. Because when you know how to draft, you understand the principles of design. And the principle of design really comes from an innate understanding of your objective and what you're trying to create. It's kind of like building a house and you know what you want it to look like on the inside, but you, or excuse me, on the outside, but you have no idea what goes on in the interior, there's no way that you would be able to bring that to fruition. So having an understanding of the structure and what goes into making that veneer or that persona come to life, um, that's a competitive advantage. I've been privileged to be able to learn how to design under those parameters. What are some ways that a young professional can see through the lens or through the eyes of the individual that's experiencing yachting? I, would, I think I would have to go back to the word that I used previously about responsibility and to really grasp the responsibility of what you're being asked to do and what's associated with it. It's, you know, it's a tremendous investment for the client, but beyond that, you cannot put um, a value, a dollar, to somebody's emotional connection to their environment, their experience. And you know, we uh, human nature is, is that we always want to do things that are most pleasing to us. Right. And really, when a client comes to ask you to do something, you have to put that aside. And you have to uh, hear what the directive is, Put your emotions and your thoughts and your opinion aside 
and you really need to be objective about what it is that you will develop and present to them and many times that could be very difficult but to understand that at the end of the day that you may have taken a year two years to produce this project the client may experience that for who knows how long you know keep a boat for five seven years two years keep a home for a couple decades so they are actually living in the wake of what it is that you did and my objective is is to make that as smooth as possible that each morning that they wake up or every time that they are experienced in this environment when they think about the experience they had with me and my team I want it to be pleasant I don't want it to be something that is a negative memory for them and there's a lot of responsibility to that absolutely what's something that people seem to misunderstand about you or, or something that that people may not uh, quite grasp maybe they would not grasp uh, the depth and the extent that we go to in design. I'm one of those designers that when I'm in an interview, I, I am a sponge because it's very important for me to clock into who I will be working with for the next few years. And all at the same time, there's a little voice inside saying, please ask me to do something I haven't done before. And that's my challenge. And that is one of the things that really motivates me as opposed to repetitive design. And you know, this is style in design where people become very familiar with it and comfortable with it, and it becomes their mode of design. If I could, I would prefer to design something different right. every day of the week. And that kind of leads back into what you were saying about being engaged in your project and the emotional appeal of, of really diving in two feet. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's hard to become engaged or to have that feeling of new engagement when it's something you've already done. You know, the expression, been there, done that. It's kind of like traveling. I, I love to travel, but you know, I just don't have the propensity to go to the same place two or three times. What's the biggest area related to design you're curious about and why? Or what are some of the things you're researching the most right now that are, are intriguing to you? Interesting you should ask that. Lately, I would say in the last year, couple years, I've been very interested in brands. Okay. Brands and how they diversify. And you see this uh, prolification of um, brands that is really going beyond what you know the brand to be. And that really strikes a lot of curiosity with me. So I've been researching brands and getting behind the story of, of why it is that they do what they do. Because I recognize with what we're doing, Yes, we design yachts, but even as a designer, period, right. um, that, that's a, such a broad spectrum. And when, when you design, and if you happen to be a good designer, uh, you basically can design anything. Uh, you, what, what becomes a challenge, the challenge, the curve, is maybe the vernacular and in the industry that you would be designing in that's new to you, um, and also getting to know the lay of the land, but a designer is a designer. And for me, that's appealing when it comes to brand. Because with diversity in brand, I think there are so many things that we can go off into that uh, would be absolutely out of the realm of what it is that we design day to day. What makes you feel inspired or like your best self? Many things, many things. There's one in particular uh, forerunner, if you would, and that's really getting into the mindset where you buy into your task. I know that sounds elementary, but it's not. It's fundamental. Um, it's, it's kind of like in sports, if, if you're not in it to win it, why play the game? It doesn't make sense. You're wasting time and energy. That's how I feel. So in the past, there were uh, occasions where I had monumental tasks. Uh, sometimes a client may ask something that you've never done before, or it's absolutely foreign to you and it may seem a little insurmountable, but I find that when I, instead of look at it that way, I actually buy into the task and recognize that there's a task that needs to, be, to get done and it's not going to get done until I actually do it. So I have no choice than to be engaged in it. So buying into it is huge for me. It gives me the motivation and when you have the motivation, that in and of itself 
brings the inspiration because you're inspiring yourself to get through it. And another thing, I am inspired when I'm most prepared and being prepared gives you fire. For anyone, you go to a meeting and you're well prepared. You are well prepared for the obvious and you're well prepared for the surprise. Why don't you tell me a little bit about your first client and that experience? Mm. That was a good experience. Uh, an older gentleman uh, that came to my company and we designed a, um, a new yacht for him. And the start of the relationship just really was on the right foot and everything went well. Um, that particular client actually is my latest client today. Uh, the past few days I've been working on the installation of their new project. And, you know, speaking about emotional connections, this is a prime example of one. Uh, with this particular client, I, I had a personal event in my life where my wife was ill. And we ended up at the uh, Mayo Clinic in Jacksonville. So my client would call me periodically, and he called me this one day, and he says, hey, how are you doing? Um, so we talked a little bit, where are you? So I told him, and of course he knew that my wife was sick, but he didn't realize what had happened. Right. And he just casually asked me, when are you coming home? How are you getting home? We're coming home in a couple of days and um, we're driving home because traveling commercially wasn't good for going through the airport. And he goes, no, you're not. And I said, well, I do believe I am going to be driving home. <laughs> and uh, he said he, he has to take a call. So he disappeared for an hour or so and called me back. And uh, much to my surprise, uh, said that he's uh, sending up his airplane to come wow. and get us. And that he did, and he made arrangements with my nephew and his wife uh, to drive my car back, six hour drive. But as far as a first client experience, that's a, a tough one to, to beat. That was a hard invitation to take because you recognize the value of it. And um, after resisting it for so long, I, you know, it revealed his, his deep desire to want to do that. And so we did and the relationship has just been incredible the whole time and um, a, a lot of fond memories uh, with many of my clients. So there's an emotional connection for you with your clients as much as it is for them with you. Like that, goes, that, that goes both yes, ways. Yes, it's reciprocal. It is reciprocal, mm -hmm. that's awesome. What a, great, what a great story for a first client. You know, I never even thought of it as, as a story until you kind of asked me that question. And I, I, you know, looking back on it, you know, there are things that happen in your career that you take for granted as just an experience that happens. Maybe it's just another ordinary day and something happens, you go home and there it is. And then you begin to reflect. And sometimes I think in that reflection, we appreciate more what we've experienced. And actually, I believe the better part of an experience many times is after the experience, it's not when you live it. Because it's so incredible or sensational that your senses just can't process it. Right. You need to digest it. That was one of those things. And um, yeah. I can only imagine. Thank you for sharing that. That's actually, it's a very personal story. It, it is, it is. But that's, that's awesome to hear. That was good. What would you consider um, the biggest surprise or biggest surprises uh, that you've had to deal with or overcome and how can you, you know, what advice would you give to a budding young professional who's trying to come into the marketplace in these weird times? Okay, that's a, a, a good question. Whether it's the marine industry or not, um, what has caught me by surprise, what's caught my company by surprise is communication. And what we've experienced now in the last several months is, um, a test uh, to that skill set of communication. And what we do is very much uh, emotional. It's, it's we're selling not a product, we're, we're selling something that fits into a person's life and nobody consumes anything without a certain measure of emotion attached to it. So, you mentioned emotion mm -hmm. and I, I want to kind of dig into that a little bit further. Mm -hmm. um, the biggest thing that I find fascinating about what you do is that there is this organic emotional connection 
with the client and the asset, the client and the design. Um, what's, what, what is one of the, the biggest or most um, heartfelt emotional connections with a project that you've had or that a client's had that you felt was really something that was special? Um, well, there was a, a project uh, in particular uh, I'm, I'm going back in, in time, but speaking about the emotion involved in it, actually, come to think of it, there are two of them. Uh, one was an expression that a client made, an ill client. And that client uh, semi-confided uh, in me uh, one day on board and said that um, when I don't feel like I could really take that next step, she told me where she retreats. and. I asked why, and it was as a result of what was developed, the emotion that went into creating that as a respite. It wasn't designed as a respite, it was discovered as a respite. And I attribute that to listening to the client. That's powerful, and, that, and that's gotta be rewarding too. I mean, that's, that, that's People look at yachts and think very superficially, mm. but there's there is that that personal touch mm. that comes in and makes it, like you said, a respite, a home, mm. a second residence, a place where there's a lot of of personal attachment and emotion. Mm -hmm. That's that's fascinating. It, it it is. The second one was about a family, and it was expressed to me when things are upside down for them, they run to the boat. And, you know, they don't run Seems to... Seems like that's often these days. You know, well, you know, it's... And, and, you know, people run to their boat for many different reasons. But in this particular instance, the expression was, uh, was being conveyed because they wanted us, as the team behind it, to recognize that it was more than steel, aluminum, and everything else that goes into it. It actually became... became has become an emotional part of their life. And the reason why is that they said the joy that they had experienced during that whole process, and some of these can take two, three, four, five years. And that's a major chunk out of somebody's life. And to be able to connect on that level, that visual level of emotion, really adds much more value of what was designed and created for them than merely just an asking price or a price tag. How do you continue to learn and advance and evolve as a designer? Hmm. Um, you know, um, observation is the best instructor. And I observe a lot. And today, there are so many ways in which you can observe what's going on in your environment, what's going on globally. And like everybody else, I have my go-to platforms, um, social media-wise, that I browse to get inspiration, particularly those from the travel industry and from the um, hospitality industry. Uh, lots of very creative ideas I see often there. That helps to um, feed this, this innate creative uh, uh, need that I have. Would you say that's something that the up and coming young professional um, should really kind of build into their repertoire of skills, this osmosis and observation of, of their peers and, and, and industry titans such as yourself? Most definitely. Uh, one of the things that I appreciate the most is that by observation, we, and on those platforms and those venues, we get to see for the most part the best of what people have to offer. So say for instance, if you have a creative firm, or if you have a resort, or if you have a, a, a travel forum, and they're going to go through the effort to produce and to fund that, put it out there, they're gonna make it its best. So you are actually getting prime, prime input right. of the best that they have to give. The, so The true finished product. The true finished product. So that in and of itself is a tremendous source, a tremendous library to go for inspiration. It is, at least for me. So we were just talking about how important it is for you to have a bulleted list, something that you can tick the boxes, you can, you can show progress and accomplishments. 
Um, would you say that's something that's one of the most important things you've learned? Has that always been something that you've done or is that something that you've really had to, to grow into and, and build as, as a professional and as, a, as an individual? No, that's hardwired. That's hardwired. It, it, it's hardwired. Uh, even since a child, I, I do better uh, knowing what parameters are. Some people don't. I flourish in that environment. And for me, um, there's really a bit of psyche in meeting a work day and getting through a work day. And for me, I, over the years, I fine tuned this, this innate desire to check the box. So my list, my day starts the night before, in which I define what my day is going to be like, like most people do. Um, but it goes a little bit further. If I have 20 items on my list, I push myself so that when I park in my parking spot and go home, 20 items are checked off. And if not, I do something a little bit psycho. If I have 18 <laughs> that struck, um, then I add two things that I did maybe extemporaneously during the day and I strike them off and you know that may sound psycho, but I go to bed feeling accomplished and it gives me the fortitude needed to face the next list of 10 or 20 things that I have to do. So that's my psyche of getting through my day and ensuring that I accomplish the task I want to accomplish. Would you say that that's what separates you from your competition? Because typically creative people tend to be a bit more abstract and, and not so refined and, and systematic. Mm. Would you say that really, you break the mold and, and that's what differentiates you from your competition? I, I would say so. I, I am not organic in that way. Uh, I am much more structured. And I think that that, that structure is inherent and so it runs through my entire life. It's not something I put on when I come into the office and take off when I go home. It follows me in my recreation, it follows me everywhere. It's just who I am. And with that comes a certain level of discipline. And in this industry, uh, discipline is probably one of the leading qualities that's needed. Um, when you design, a boat, some of them with tremendous budgets, uh, you need discipline and you need to understand how to exercise that discipline to fulfill what you're asked. So discipline is pretty important. It's always been in my life. How would you describe what you do in the yachting industry to someone just breaking in out of college, just trying to cut their gums? Mm, good question. We design people's wildest dreams. Plain and simple. Wildest dreams. That is, I mean, that's that's the industry we live in, isn't it? It is. It is. If you cannot meet that, then you're no longer a contender. What does being a designer mean to you, Patrick mm -hmm. Knowles? Um, I see it as a tremendous responsibility. You know, there's there there are certain um, definitions about design. You have designers. You have decorators. You have illustrators. You have you name it. Um, but as a designer, I take it pretty seriously because there, it, it is a tremendous responsibility. And not only because of the value, the intrinsic value of what we're designing, what we're dealing with, but a designer who is going to design an experience or an environment for an individual, that's a pretty responsible thing to take on because it's going to impact them emotionally. Right. There are so many things relative to lighting, to color, to texture, to composition, that drives our emotions that we don't even, we're not aware of it. So as a professional, I feel the responsibility of being a designer to exercise that craft in a way that is responsible. Because the person who is going to live my, I'm only designing it, they're gonna live it. And that's different. It's one thing to design, it's one thing to look at it, it's a different thing to live in it. And you bring it on as a part of your life. And that's a visceral connection. If I could remove all barriers and constraints on a project, what would you do? And more importantly, would you want to be known only by that project? So that I understand correct, all barriers? All barriers. Okay, because in this answer, all barriers will need to come off the table. 
I would love to design an exterior experience on an airplane. Oh, wow. Yeah, I started in aviation design. I, I, I have an innate passion for jets and anything that flies, and, and I really enjoyed that part of my career. Um, but yes, it, it, it's, it's facetiously speaking, but with all barriers being removed, yes, I would love to design an exterior experience on, a, on, on an aircraft. Would I want to be known only by that? No, no. I don't think anybody should be known for either one event or one accomplishment, excuse me, in life. Um, we're too diversified and complex to be marked and to be defined as just one event, one thought, one accomplishment. So the answer would be no, I would not want to be defined by it, but I would love with all of the barriers off the table, do something like that. Thank you so much for sharing with our with our membership and with myself some of the uh, the nuances and and the perspective that you lend to the the yachting community. You're welcome, Chris, and I look forward to our opportunity once again have a chance to sit down and talk shop. Looking forward to it. <laughs>